Hi guys, today I wanted to share with you my recipe for banana pancakes. I had a request for this recipe and even though I have shared this recipe before within various videos on my channel, I've never really explained it step by step and I couldn't point to what videos it's in. So here it is. My toddler loves these pancakes and has been eating them regularly for nearly two years now. As the ingredients are all clean and healthy, it makes a perfect breakfast, but I also like to prepare these ahead for a snack on the go, and they even make a delicious dessert because they are just that good. Uh, with a scoop of ice cream, they're actually absolutely dreamy. Uh, the best part is the ingredients are so simple and basic that you probably already have them all on hand. Uh, so here we go. To make this recipe, you're gonna need one spotty banana, and it is very important that you use a spotty banana as the spots signal that the starches in the banana have converted over to sugars, um, and that is really important because if it's too starchy, it will affect the texture of the pancake, and also you want those natural sugars in the banana as that will make your pancake nice and sweet without adding any actual additional processed sugars. Next, you're gonna want some type of flour. I like to use oat flour for this recipe. And to make oat flour, I literally just take um, regular instant type porridge oats and I just put them in the blender and you get oat flour. And this also makes the recipe um, gluten-free if you're using gluten-free oats. You're also going to want some type of milk. I like to use oat milk as it's just my favorite. And this is completely optional, but I like to add a dash of cinnamon as that's how my daughter likes to have her pancakes. You can completely omit this and just make the pancakes with the banana flour and milk, but um, I put cinnamon in it. You could also, instead of cinnamon or in addition to cinnamon, use um, vanilla extract, raisins, um, chocolate chips, just whatever you or your child prefer. Lastly, you're just going to want some type of oil for frying your pancakes in. And I like to use coconut oil because it works really well for high heats. It doesn't go rancid while it's being cooked. All right, so let's just get right into making the actual pancake. So you're going to start off with your ripe banana. Just put the peel on the side there. And I just mash it up in a bowl with a regular old fork. You could use like a potato masher or something like that if you want to be fancy, but the fork definitely does the job. And then I mentioned that the cinnamon is completely optional, but I like to add it in at this point just so I can really um, distribute it well throughout the entire pancake so I don't get like lumps in it. So I just like to work that in really quickly. Now I like to just add a splash of milk. This is maybe about a tablespoon. And I like to really get that mixed very well with the banana. The better this is incorporated, I find the better it mixes with the flour in the next step. All right, so now I'm gonna add the oat flour and I'm gonna be really annoying because I don't really have an amount that I add. I go more by the texture because it depends so much on how large your banana is, how um, ripened your banana is, because like I said, the starches will affect the um, texture. So you really just want it to be a pancake-like batter texture, where you don't want it to be completely runny, but you also don't want it to be too thick. So I've just added a couple of um, tablespoonfuls of flour there, but it might differ quite a lot when you're making the recipe you might find. And this is actually, I got very lucky and got this kind of right on the first try, but this is really the texture that I like to go for. Um, it's not too thick, like it runs, but at the same time, it's not super thin either. All right, I am so sorry guys, but I filmed the next step without turning my camera on. But basically, I've just got a little bit of my oil 
in the pan on a low to a medium to low heat. It's going to depend a lot on your stove top and it might take a few tries to kind of get the temperature right. But um, I like to just pour the pancake mix into smaller um, sized pancakes because that's how my daughter likes to eat it. And I just kind of flatten it down a little bit because it won't really spread out on its own. And then before flipping it, I like to just kind of give it a little nudge to fully release the pancake um, just because it helps with like breakage. Plus the little nudge helps a lot because if the pancake's not fully cooked, it's not gonna release. Um, so if it gives me resistance, I just give it a bit more time. So I just flip the pancakes. That's probably cooked a little bit more than I like to normally do it, but because I missed out on filming for you guys, I had to take that extra time to explain what I did. Um, and I really wanted to show you the little nudge step that I like to do before flipping. Although actually this caramelization makes them taste really nice. So I just flip them over and once again, I just kind of like press them down to help um, level them off because they won't, they won't spread out on their own. So I'm just gonna cook it on this other side until it's browned on the other side and that's gonna take probably somewhere from 30 seconds to a minute. The first side usually takes about a minute and then the second side takes um, generally about half to three quarters of that time. And once again, that totally depends on your stovetop and how your heat works, especially like a gas range versus an electric stovetop. They're so different, aren't they? So it's just one of those things that the more and more you make this recipe, you'll kind of get a gauge of what setting you're going to cook it on and how long you're going to let them cook. So I think these are ready. See, I would say that that is actually perfect because I have um, overcooked the other sides a little bit. As you can see, like I'll try to give you guys a better close up. I don't know how well that's gonna come up with the lighting. The lighting is really bad, but um, let me move that. There we go, that's better. You guys can see my socks. <laughs> um, there's just a little bit of browning on the edges of the pancake and otherwise it is, it's cooked, you know, it's ready to eat. I would say that is how I like it to look. So that's it. I'm just going to transfer my finished pancakes to a plate and these are ready to eat once they've cooled down. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and if you try it out, please let me know how the recipe works out for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you for my next video.